Welcome back to Mad Medicine. In this lecture, we're going to be talking about the RBC measurements you should know for step one and what they mean. Now, this is going to be a pretty high yield ex uh, lecture, but don't worry, it's going to be really quick and really, really painless. So with that being said, if you guys don't know, you can go on our YouTube channel, YouTube forward slash Mad Medicine, where you can find all of our USMLE step one hematology lectures. And while you're there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel because it will really help us out. We'd like to post these videos every single day for you guys, so your support will mean a lot to us. Thank you. So with that being said, let's start our conversation by talking about RBC measurements. So red blood cell measurements are going to be used to determine a variety of diseases and pathologic states in our body. And what it is, is mainly measuring the amounts of things you have in your blood. So blood is composed of two main components. You have plasma and you have red blood cells. So the main, the first RBC measurements you need to know is called red blood count. Red blood count or your RBC count is going to be the amount of red blood cells you have in a CBC. That's it. It literally is going to be the amount. Okay. It's not a percentage, it's not a value. It's telling you how many red blood cells you have in this amount. Then you have your hemoglobin. Your hemoglobin constant is your concentration of hemoglobin within the red blood cells in general. So this is an overall concentration in your blood. So how much hemoglobin you have circulating in your blood. And then you have your hematocrit, which is the percentage of red blood cells compared to plasma, compared to white blood cells and platelets, etc., etc. So what percentage of your blood is composed of red blood cells? That is what your hematocrit is. Now, when it comes to RBC measurements, you can follow something called the rule of threes. And this makes it so much easy. Let's say your red blood cell count is given and uh, it's X, right? Well, by applying the rule of threes, you can now figure out how much hemoglobin and hematocrit you should have. So hemoglobin is going to be the amount of your red blood cells times three, and your hematocrit is going to be the time is your hemoglobin times three. That's exactly what is happening. Okay. Now, when it comes to your normal values, usually you're going to have five million red blood cells. You're going to have a hematocrit or hemoglobin, sorry, of 15 grams per deciliter and a hematocrit of about 45%. So 45% of your blood is going to be red blood cells. And you're going to have 15 grams of, uh, um, of uh, hemoglobin per deciliter of blood in general. And you're going to have 5 million blood cells in that uh, amount. So that is what your red blood cell measurements are telling you. Now we're going to talk about something called red blood cell indices. Now, indices are measurements of your mean red blood cell characteristics. Before, we were talking about specific characteristics, right? Like the red blood cell count, which is the number of red blood cells all the way to what percentage of blood is red blood cells, which is your hematocrit. Now, we're going to be talking about the mean characteristics of your red blood cells, and these are usually what's used in anemias. So, the main red blood cell indices you need to know are your MCV, your mean corpuscular volume, your MCH, or your mean corpuscular hemoglobin, and then your MCHC, your mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration. So what does that mean? MCV is just the mean size of your red blood cell. How big is your normal red blood cell? So this is just your mean RBC size. That means that the next, uh, the next indices, your me your mean corpuscular hemoglobin, means that uh, the average mass of hemoglobin in a red blood cell. So how much uh, red hemoglobin do you have in a red blood cell? That is your mean corpuscular hemoglobin. And then your mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration is the average concentration of hemoglobin in a single red blood cell. So these are very closely connected. The mean corpuscular volume, however, is not always closely connected to the hemoglobin and the hemoglobin concentration. Now, the main thing you need to know is this. This is very high yield. The MCV is very useful in classifying many anemias, and that's what we're going to use from the next for the next uh, uh, lectures that we're going to be talking about. In the next lectures, we're going to be discussing all the types of anemias and what causes anemias. And in those cases, the MCV is going to be very important for classifying what type of anemia someone may have. So if you have an MCV that is less than 80, you're going to have a microcytic anemia, meaning the mean RBC size is going to be small, so small sized red blood cells. 
Okay, that is what you're gonna have. Then, if you have an MCV about an 80 to 100, this is called a normal cytic anemia, meaning you're gonna have a normal uh, sized RBC. That doesn't mean that the red blood cell is functioning properly, it just means that the size is normal. And then if you have an MCV greater than 100, you're going to have a large red blood cell, and this is going to present with macrocytic anemia. So that is what we are talking about. This is a large-sized RBC on average. So that is why you need to know these red blood cell measurements and indices. Now we're going to be talking about anemias in the upcoming lectures. So I highly hope, I, I really hope this was helpful, especially for the upcoming uh, topics that we're going to be discussing. Thank you so much for listening to this quick video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. It'll really help us out. You guys can follow us on Instagram at mad.medicine and on Twitter at it's mad medicine. And if you guys don't know, you can find these lectures on your podcast uh, that you listen to for free. Just search mad medicine and will pop up.